It's Monday morning and class is underway. Thank you. But instead of textbooks and pencil cases, the learning is hands-on. Animals are the subject. Oh, it's starting to get a bit tight around here. This is Templestowe College, or TC, an alternative school for alternative thinkers. Are you an educational radical? <laughs> Radical's probably too strong. But what, yeah, what I'm do you think you are? significantly dissatisfied with the way traditional education works. Peter Hutton is the well-liked principal of this Melbourne public school where students are in charge of their own studies. What is it about the current system that makes you so dissatisfied? I think a lot just don't like it and like anything when we don't like it we don't put in our best effort. Outdated. Oh, totally outdated. It was a system that was fit for purpose probably 150 years ago. <laughs> Here they select whatever subjects they want whatever their passions. There's no grading, no testing, and everything's negotiable. There are no class levels. No. How does that work? Well, if there's I, no I grade would... 8, grade 9, grade 10, grade 11? It, it seems crazy that we group students solely by their year of manufacture, so that, you know, just by the date of their birth determines who they should be learning with. How do you produce a well-rounded student, though, if they are well, not we're, doing... we're not a factory. We don't produce students. We take students who are individual people and we look at what their strengths are and endeavour to build on those strengths. Students run their own businesses out of the school. Peter? That's me. Thank you. Is business good today? Going all right, is it? Okay. Thanks. They interview prospective teachers. How do you ensure that all students learn at their own pace? I really strongly believe in making sure that each student has an individualised program. And start the school day at a time that suits them. It's anything but traditional education. Do you believe your system is right? Absolutely. And so that would suggest that the other system is wrong. Absolutely. Australia's education system is in crisis. On a continual slide down world rankings in science, reading and maths. Trends demonstrate a 15-year-old student is now seven months behind where they were 10 years ago in science alone. Peter Hutton puts it down to an archaic system that places far too much pressure and competition on teachers and kids. 17-year-old Josh Peake was a failure at his previous school, but Templestowe gave him a second chance. Students at the other school were like, they focused so much on the learning and they, you know, trying to get better scores and all that. And if someone kind of got in their um, way and all that, they would, yeah, avoid them. Were you upset? Yeah, yeah. I didn't, and then I got bullied at that school as well. So. You got bullied? Yeah. How, but, how did you get bullied? Oh, just um, punching, kicking and all that. Oh. And Josh is not alone. Where I used to be was completely different. I feel like if you weren't good enough for them, you would get left behind, and that was it. I hated my old school. I didn't like going to school. But here, we're treated differently, and we're treated at the other schools, we were treated as like a number, and that was kind of it. Here, we're treated like a student, and they pick our needs and what we want to learn, educationally-wise. You need to write out the question. Do we put too much pressure on students? I'm really skeptical about that argument. Let me give you an example. Here's a, a question from year three mathematics NAPLAN. Emma has eight seashells. She keeps five and she gives the rest to her friend Harry. How many does Harry have? Are we really supposed to believe that asking that question of a student 
inflicts psychological damage on them. Stephen Schwartz is the chair of the Australian Curriculum, Assessment and Reporting Authority. He recognises there's a problem with our system, but says an overhaul isn't the answer. Sure, there are challenges in life, and maybe doing a NAPLAN test is a challenge, but it is nothing compared to the challenge of leaving school unable to read, unable to write, and trying to find a job. Fourteen thousand kilometres away, in the icy surrounds of Finland, an education transformation has taken place. Fifty years ago, this country hit the reset button on schooling, and the results have had the world transfixed. It's a revolution. I've read that in Finland, the best school is the closest school. Is that something you agree with? Yes, definitely I agree with. Why is that? Well, every school is pretty much the same in Finland. Lena Liu Savara is the principal of Resu Comprehensive School in Helsinki. Where are the private schools and where are the independent schools? Well, we rarely have any private schools in Finland. There's no need for that kind of a system in, in the country, so... There's all public schools. Yes. They're all the same. Yes. Teach the same things. Yes. To the same students who have the same learning potential. Yes. And that works? That works really, really well. I, I wouldn't understand it if, if uh, somebody would like to do it in any other way. And there are other factors that have made the Finnish system a unique success. Kids begin school later, at the age of seven. And their education is completely free. It has staggered start times and shorter days. There's limited homework, no standardised tests, no rankings, and a strong emphasis on free play. At least 15 minutes of every hour is spent in the schoolyards. Finland didn't always have it so good. In fact, back in the 1960s, like much of post-war Europe, it was a pretty ordinary place to be. There was bitter and deep divisions, there was a lot of debt owed to neighbouring countries, so a big and bold decision had to be made. Either stay stuck in a rut or make a change. The government made a change. What was the plan? Public school education. It was a gamble that's still paying huge dividends. Finland, with its population of over five million people, has consistently topped world rankings for the last decade. Students are learning and they're having fun doing it. Five times F uh, minus 32. What is it about the school that you like? It's really relaxed, I like it here a lot. Relaxed? What do you reckon, Roy? I think it's fun because you have loads of friends and lo lots of recess time. And then you just divide the whole thing by nine. Do you like languages? I know a lot of languages. How many languages do you speak? Uh, I speak six languages, three fluently and uh, three I'm, I'm intermediate studying. What do you like about school? I just love my school. We have a free food and uh, interesting subjects. Hello. Hi, Mom. Sydney author Lucy Clark wishes her kids could have had the same schooling experience as the Finnish students. My daughter had a really difficult time at school. She struggled. Um, through the later years of high school and started shutting down her output, basically just couldn't deal with the idea of competition and assessment and ranking of children. So she gave up. gave up. She basically failed to hit every mark a child is expected to hit in mainstream schooling. So 
it was really, really stressful for our family, but it was difficult for no one more than her. And has your child been able to recover or bounce back or no. there's still problems? No, no, she's still recovering from her school experience. Her daughter's problems forced Lucy to investigate our schooling system. What she found was troubling and widespread. How's she doing now? Children suffering from depression and high anxiety at the sheer pressure of needing to succeed. I think there are a lot of kids who feel like failures in the school system because we have a very narrow view of what success is. And it's very uh, alienating for a lot of kids who fall outside that narrow view. Don't you think that some children need to be challenged though in school? Yes. Because when they get older, life ain't easy. Yeah, that's true, that's true. But I don't think um, uh, drilling down with adult-like pressures onto children during a vulnerable time in their life is the way to go. Why do you think the Finland model has been so successful? There's only one key word that I can actually find, and that's trust. It's like trust throughout the whole thing. The society trusts its educationists and the schools are trusted by the parents. I, as a principal, I trust my teachers. In Finland, teachers, alongside doctors, are the most respected people in the country. And it's a highly sought after profession that requires a master's degree at university. What's your view on oh, Finland? I think it's a Finnish fantasy, actually. A Finnish uh, fantasy? Uh, Finland's a very small country, population about the same size as Sydney's population. Very homogeneous country. Everybody's pretty much the same in Finland. Uh, there's very little diversity. There's very little poverty. There are hardly any disadvantaged schools. It's not a very close comparator for Australia. If, we put we that argument Australia. to the Finns. We have immigrants. We have uh, unemployed uh, families and that kind of things. We have uh, language issues. We have Finnish as a mother tongue, Finnish as a second language. We have special education students in every single school. Back in Melbourne, and in case you're wondering, Templestowe's free range system does meet Victorian curriculum guidelines, even though the emphasis is on students finding their own path of learning rather than sitting for tests. I just love seeing when students take control of their own education and it, it's nothing to do with me other than creating um, the environment that allows them to do that. How can a student have the mental maturity to know what they want to do at such a young age? If you look at a toddler, they know what they want to do. It's, it's not, a, it's not a, a significant stretch to think that an adolescent doesn't know what they do and what they don't like. Do you put happiness above academic success? Absolutely. Why would you not do that? A happy, a happy learner is a successful learner. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.